first became interested in the origins of life about 25 years ago, shortly after Tom Cech and Sid Altman discovered that RNA molecules could act as enzymes. Because that completely changed the way that we thought about the origins of life. And instead of having to deal with the complexity of modern cells, you could think about much, much simpler cells. Cells with perhaps just one RNA molecule catalyzing its own replication. And so to get from that, from the, the earlier chemistry, seemed like a much more tractable problem. It seemed like something that could actually be approached experimentally. What we're doing in relatively simple terms, and after all, these are very simple experiments with a very simple goal. We want to take uh, chemicals, the kinds of chemicals, ideally, that would have been around on the early Earth before life emerged. And we want to understand how those chemicals would interact together and eventually start behaving like a very simple kind of cell. And the real criterion for that, the thing that's important to us, is that this kind of interacting system has to start evolving in a Darwinian sense. What we want to see is the emergence of Darwinian evolution uh, from simple chemicals. Another way, I guess, of saying that is we're, we're interested in, in seeing the transition from complicated chemistry to really simple biology. And that's the interface that we're focusing on. One of the things that we're struggling with now is the developing a chemical system that has replication, inheritance of information. These are the key things that you need in order to have Darwinian evolution. And, and so that's what we're trying to, trying to do in the laboratory. And I, you know, I don't know how long it'll take in order to get that to actually work. What, what we do know is that if we replicate molecules in a purely artificial laboratory way, using enzymes and so on, that we can evolve RNAs to do all kinds of interesting things. So I think it's clear that if we can devise a means by which RNA or some similar molecule could uh, replicate spontaneously, that evolution would have to emerge from that kind of situation. And that's, so that's what we want to see. One of the very interesting questions, considering that modern biology is dominated by protein enzymes, is where do these enzymes come from? How do they evolve? How hard is it to, to evolve a protein molecule that will fold into the, one of these complicated structures and catalyze a chemical reaction? And so we worked out technology for doing that. Um, and we were recently able to evolve uh, the first uh, enzyme in the laboratory, something that catalyzed a, a reaction that's not seen in nature. And uh, so that was also very exciting and satisfying. So with this idea of testing our understanding by building things, that's really the same philosophy that's behind a lot of what we're doing now. We're trying to take, uh, well, mixtures of chemicals and get them to uh, work together and make a primitive, simple cellular structure. We have ideas about how it would happen, what this protocell should look like. And so the best way to test our ideas about the origin of life and the structure of early cells is to try to build them in the lab and see if their behavior matches our expectations. Um, so I think this kind of uh, almost engineering approach to scientific questions can be very powerful.